Hi guys, welcome to Carport Woodcraft. In today's video I'm going to be making two farmhouse style tables with matching benches. We're going to be constructing these out of 2x4s and 2x9s. For the table base then, this is what we're going to be using. 2x4s construction grid and this is the style of frame we're going to be using. I'll show you the drawings in a minute. It's a very simple construction, looks more complicated than, than it is with these angles. All these angles are cut at 10 degrees, whether it's the top or the bottom of the table and they all come together nicely like this. And then we're going to use a simple joinery method which is the mechanical fixings of screws and that's in the form of pocket holes. The first thing we're going to do then is cut the timber for the legs. All these are cut at 10 degrees. Might have saw set at zero which is a 90 degree cut so I'm going to move that over to 10 degrees and lock that in position. And then I'm going to remove this nasty knot here and this crack and then we'll make the remainder of the cuts. All what's left to do now then is to attach the legs to the cross frames and we use the pocket hole jig here as a square edge to butt everything up against and line everything up nice and neatly. All the joints are nice and tight and we're just going to glue and screw these together now. Before we screw them together, we can put two of the off cuts with the same angle from the 2x4s against there. And then we can clamp then, it gives us a nice square edge to clamp against without that slipping. Pop a clamp on. And then we're just going to pop in some 9mm dowels into the pocket holes and when we sand these down they'll be barely visible. No real need to buy them expensive plugs. These bits of dowels work perfectly in my experience. Now a nice easy task, cut these supporting frames and there's three of these, all 2x4s cut at 1200 and then we just pocket all them either side into the table and fill again. Now we're going to mark just where we're going to put the cross frames or the rails, a nice square line to follow and then to find the centre of this rail for the next support piece and that's two foot so if I mark, just over two foot is so if I mark out a foot The good thing about putting three screws in with the pocket holes is that you can then rotate it once you've got it in to be square and then it'll stay in place for you. Next I moved on to making the table top and this is made a lot easier today by using PSE plain square edge timber. The customer wanted a farmhouse look on the table top uh, with individual boards so what I suggested was that we still joint the boards together to make a solid table top but we put a chamfer on the edge of each board so it gives the illusion of the boards are just butted together. 
And to do this I just tilt the table saw blade over to 45 degrees and take a small chamfer off of each board. We've cut each board sides at the table saw then and the table is now measuring just over 700 mil which is what the client wants, 700. We've put the little chamfer on the other side of each one of these boards so it's going to look like individual boards yet we're still going to glue up the full table. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to number each board one, two, three, four so I know exactly where they go when we come to assemble the table. I'm then going to use this 2x4 as a straight edge. I'm going to draw some lines where I want the pocket holes to go. So I'm going to do one at the top, one at the bottom, and then I'm going to alternate these. So now there's one in the middle, about every six to eight inches. Don't have to be super accurate when you're doing this. One in the middle, one top, one bottom. Now all we have to do is set the pocket hole jig up, glue and screw these boards together. And one of the best things about this is as soon as we've done that, we can crack on working with it. We can sand it, we can stain it, we can do everything we want to it. We don't have to wait for no glue up. So that's one of the main bonuses about pocket holes. And I'll just put a generous bead of glue down each board and Attach the pocket holes, keeping everything nice and flat. And now I'm just going to attach all the pocket screws. And you can clamp a piece of timber on the top and on the bottom of your tabletop to keep all these pieces flush. Uh, I'm not doing that today, I'm just keeping a bit of pressure on each one and attaching each pocket screw. And that's keeping everything nice and flush just doing that. But, you know, if you're not confident doing that, definitely clamp it all down nice and tight. We've spun the table round, cleaned all the glue off, and now Jacob's just going to square this end off. And he's using the track saw and a square guide. And you could just put a circular saw on with a straight edge that do the same job as this. And uh, then we're going to spin it round, measure 1800mm and cut it nice and square on that side. And that's the table saw Tabletop assembled, ready for waxing, or oh, sanding, then waxing. I didn't record the sanding in today's video then guys, but we just went straight to 120 grit, and then a quick sanding with 240, and it gave a great smooth finish. To add some nice colour and protection, we added dark oak pry wax, and we just apply this with a brush, and then we wait, 15-20 minutes and then we buff off with a clean cloth. Hi the friend, then we're going to be using this Liberon Spirit Wood Dye, it's an ethanol, ethanol based wood dye and you definitely need some gloves to apply it and if you're doing it indoors, open any doors and windows, have an extractor fan on and maybe even think about a respirator, it's quite strong stuff but it's actually really nice stuff to work with, it applies really easily and it gives a great finish even on pine, no blotching in my experience so that's my go-to what I use. M far better than a water based as that rains that raises the grain in a pine and it can leave blotchiness as well so I'll show you how I apply it uh, on a scrap piece and then I'll apply it to the table itself, to the table base that is. All you need to do then is give it a good shake, pour it into a container. Soak it up liberally on a brush and apply. If you want a darker finish, leave it on for a few more minutes. If you want a lighter finish, wipe off straight away. You'll see now how easy it is to apply and it gives a great lovely finish. I want it quite dark so I'm going to leave that for a minute or so and then I'm going to come back and wipe off. That's been about a minute, now I'm just going to get a clean rag and just wipe it off following the pattern of the grain. And like I say, this is a rough piece of timber, so you will see it bunching up in these areas here. And that's just because this has not been sanded yet. But as you can see, it goes on lovely. And you apply a couple of coats of this on timber that's been sanded to 240 grit, and it goes on absolutely great. Simple as that, 
All done. I'll apply that to the, the table base, and I think Jacob's going to come in this evening and apply, in a, and apply a few coats of some acrylic varnish, which once this is dry, it's totally compatible with it, no problem whatsoever. The final step is to apply this water-based varnish. We're going to give it three coats just to give it some protection. That's the tables complete now then guys, they're all packaged up, ready to go out on delivery. And one thing I didn't record just at the end there was just me attaching the table tops to the base and that was just done with pocket hole screws through the frame underneath into the base of the table. Is there anything I've done different then on this project then guys? One thing I'm slightly wary about is the, the use of wax in a commercial setting. The customer did ask for a wax finish so that's what I've supplied them with. But personally, I'm not sure if a wax finish on, on your tabletop is appropriate for a commercial setting. So I'm a bit wary about that. But if they do have any problems in the future, I'm sure they'll come back to me for some advice or assistance. Uh, in regards to the rest of the build, I'm really happy with, with, how it's, how, with how it's gone. There is a part two to this video, and that's going to be available to my Patreon supporters only. And that's going to be all about how I designed the tables the how I went about doing the quote and how I priced the work. So that's going to be available in the next coming days for the part two on Patreon. The next thing you're going to see then guys is me and my family going to the Embassy Hotel on Headham Road in Hull and we're going to sample some of the breakfast and set the tables that we built. So you'll get to see the finished project and us and us enjoying our breakfast so i'll catch you on the next video guys i hope you enjoyed this one and uh, thank you to everyone who's supporting the channel by watching the videos commenting on the videos which uh, i really appreciate i love conversing with all you guys in the comments and thanks to all my patreon supporters massive shout out to you guys without without you i couldn't be doing what i'm doing now so uh, i'll catch you on the next video guys and i'll see you in a bit hi guys Hi. Do you want to see Lily? No. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone want to see Lily? No. This is live stream. We're on live stream. Here's Lily. No, stop it. <laughs> Alfie, it say like hi. Me? I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> Alfie, say oh, hi. My skin looks <laughs> uh, right then. We're off to the Embassy Hotel for our breakfast where we uh, <clears throat> where we made the tables for. So uh, we'll show you the finished product in the restaurant. Hopefully we'll be sat them tables. I asked for them. So we'll see. Uh, see you in a minute. And we're off. For YouTube. Are you filming? <laughs> You're from all of. Look at the leaves. You're on YouTube, you know. <laughs> Oh. Supposed to pretend to be nice on YouTube. Oh right, we're just going to see uh, my dad. Yeah. <laughs> dad. He's in here. All prison. <laughs> For uh, Copyright claims against YouTube. Oh. Only joking, we went the wrong way. Yeah! <laughs> right. Here we are. Here it is. The Embassy Hotel. And what's that called? Gingers? Serving breakfast and brunch, that's where it is.
Ay. Oh, bueno. <risa> y bueno, se lo <risa> I'm mm -hmm.